Hi all, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Herb Ian, here in Beijing, next to a toy town railway here, um, which will become apparent why I've chosen this spot. But welcome back to my channel. Last week I had a fantastic little trip out to the coastline here in China near Beijing. It was actually 90 minutes from Beijing. I travelled in a high speed train, a bullet train, and it was amazing. It's a fantastic way to travel. And you can see that video um, on my channel or linked up here, and I'll also link it at the end of this video so you can have a look at what it's like to holiday here at a beach town in China. But when I was travelling back to Beijing, there was a couple of things politically related things that were happening back in the UK that I was came, keeping up to speed with, so to speak, excuse the pun. The first thing was the loss of the by-election where the SNP lost the political seat to a Labour Party candidate. That was not fantastic, to be honest. And another example of where people are voting against their own interest. The SNP have provided so many benefits from healthcare, free education, university education level, free bus travel, baby boxes, and now they are given reduced train travel at peak times, and there's so many other positives, but just naming a few here. These are the things that the Labour Party have said they would remove if they come to power in Scotland. And I've always wondered why people vote against their interest, and I think the answer is often coming back to the same thing, which is media manipulation. We saw a lot of media manipulation. Um, in Scotland to, to force the, the vote towards Labour um, in that situation. Anyway, the other thing I was keeping an eye on was the Conservative Party conference. That was eye-opening for many reasons. One being this political party that has been in power for 13 years are telling us, the people of the UK, in fact, that they are the party of change. A Prime Minister who is unelected and has his fingerprints all over so many of the corrupt decisions in the last 13 years, he's telling the people of the UK to trust him as he's the man to drive forward the change. This is laughable if it wasn't so sad. And while he's telling the people in the UK he was the man to lead the change, he announces that the UK is scrapping, building the high-speed rail network. And for me, that is a total reflection of how far the UK has fallen. It's a bit of an embarrassment as a country now and a bin fire of political decision making and it was there to see in the Conservative Party conference. Now, the HS2, High Speed Rail as it's known, has been in the making for more than 25 years in the UK. It was finally signed off to be built in 2010 by Gordon Brown, the Labour Prime Minister uh, at that time, and the projected costs were to be about £20 million. Since then, and it has been constantly reduced in scope, in size, in scale, while the cost has constantly risen. It is now estimated to be costing nearly £90 billion, and for that, the UK will now get less than 150 miles of high-speed rail track. Honestly, it is eye-watering how much money has already been wasted, and for what? Someone somewhere has been benefiting from this vast spend, and it certainly isn't the British public who are footing most of the bill of the costs. Meanwhile, in China, there is almost 50,000 kilometres, which is about 30,000 miles of high-speed rail, and it's all done at a fraction of the cost. And if you want to know the cost, here are the numbers for you. The cost per kilometre in China is roughly about 17 to 21 million dollars per kilometer and that includes some very difficult terrain like um, things like tunnels and viaducts across valleys and then building on very challenging land to build on and to see a feat of engineering you should look at the high speed train uh, tracks that were built in the tibetan plain that in itself is a special feat of engineering you should look that up now for a price comparison the new high speed rail built in California is about $56 million per kilometre. In Europe, the cost is about 25 to $39 million per kilometre. In the UK, now wait for this, this will blow your mind. It is estimated, not estimated, it's rising all the time. It's estimated that the UK costs will be more than 
300 million dollars per kilometer and that is for almost no real distance in track. This is just tragic, sad and it makes the UK look like a sad joke of a nation. A nation that's falling apart politically if you ask me. To put this cost into some perspective for you because we are we're not always good at getting our head around big numbers and certainly when it comes to dollars. This is like a British person and a Chinese person walking into a restaurant and ordering fish, chips and mushy peas for dinner. The person from China is charged £10 for their meal. The person from Britain is charged £143 for their meal. And here's the kicker for you. The person from China, they've eaten their meal. They've had drinks and they've had dessert. They're off, they've left the restaurant. They're very satisfied. Well, the person from the UK is still waiting for his meal to be served. And it looks like the meal is no longer fish, chips and mushy peas. It looks like the person from the UK is getting served a teaspoon of mush. One of the best ways to travel is by bullet train. Until you experience it, you don't understand it. And you don't get it. And apparently, in the UK, you're not getting it. This is Ian here in Beijing, leaving you with some video footage of high-speed rail here in Beijing, China, showing the people in the UK what you could have won. And as always, this is me, Ian, wishing you all the best to care yourself and family, your community. And as always, her, yeah, peace out. Take care. Enjoy this. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot